the classical violin makers like Stradivari created designs which have been admired through the centuries and frequently copied. Modern makers look for opportunities to find precise models for the work that they do. I had opportunity to spend time in the Paris Conservatory Instrument Museum and could make tracings and measurements of their fine instruments. Among those was a Stradivari violin made in 1699. It is a long pattern Stradivari, a bit longer than the normal 14 inch, and a beautiful instrument in very fine condition. I was able to make a tracing of the outline of the back of that instrument from which I could analyze and study it and also compare it to the wooden forms Stradivari used to make his violins, most of which are still conserved and are in a museum in Cremona, Italy today. Beginning with this tracing of the back, I then proceeded to do a tracing of the outline of the belly, including the position of the F-holes, so that I could reproduce the whole instrument and could study it as an entirety. Moving to my tracing of the belly, this is a very thin polyester tracing film, which I trimmed so that I could place it over the instrument without uh, taking the strings and bridge off. You'll see a cutout at the top for the fingerboard, one in the center for the bridge, and one at the bottom for the tailpiece. This simple method proved to be very satisfactory for study, accurate to within less than a half millimeter, though modern scans with digital equipment may provide somewhat more precise measurements, this proved to be a very flexible method of taking data and creating analytical studies from it. A tracing of the belly is the point of departure for our study. You will notice the squares and the long rectangle which are based upon the dimensions of the belly. The smaller square is based upon the width of the top bout, the larger square the width of the bottom bout. In this violin, intriguingly, the two squares actually meet on the same line so that the length is equal to the sum of the width of the top and the width of the bottom bouts. Something that also follows from this unexpectedly is that the F holes have a relation to that line. The treble F hanging directly from the line, the base F dropping slightly below it about a millimeter and leads us to ask was this an accident of Stradivari's construction or might there be more to that because most of his violins show the same relationship the treble F being slightly higher than the bass. We will have reason to study this very carefully momentarily. Among the wooden forms is one from June 1692, which exactly matches the outline of this violin. The form is about four and a half millimeters uh, narrower and shorter than the violin. And that difference is made up by the width of the ribs and the overhang of the belly. 
I had opportunity to study this form in Cremona, uh, held it in my hands, was able to use reflected light to look at the surface of the form, and found that there were small holes in it, which I noted on a piece of tracing paper, and these are marked with red pencil circles to show you where they appeared on the form. There were two scribe lines above the central hole, leading to the conclusion that this was made by a compass. He pressed the central leg into the form and then scribed these two lines. In this photograph I took of a wooden form by Stradivari, you can clearly see the compass center and the two scribe marks which I analyze in this presentation. Um, through the years people have questioned what this was all about. Sacconi, a very famous restorer of Stradivari instruments, in his book The Secrets of Stradivari, thought this represented the difference in height between the rib at the top of the instrument and the rib at the bottom. The larger radius being a higher rib at the bottom, shorter radius, about a millimeter and a half shorter for the rib at the top. Measuring instruments, you see that that is approximately how they were made. But could this mean even more than that? By taking the belly, which we've looked at here, and overlaying it on the form, we can see whether there are any further relations between what appears to be a random geometric positioning and an obviously well thought through geometric positioning of the S. Once this overlay has been drawn, first thing we see by taking one of these scribe lines and creating a circle around that puncture point is that the central position of the upper eyes of the F's appears to be very perfectly defined by this circle. Something else, incidentally, Right below here is a cross line drawn through the inner notch of the treble F from edge to edge. That divides the body length into a proportion of six to five. If you count six units down to this line, you'll count five more down to the bottom of the body length. So 11 units, 6 above and 5 below. This proportion is very frequently met with in classical Criminese violins. It appears to be the preferred position for the bridge, which would be placed on this line. The bridge feet would bisect the line. Something else to look at is once the line is drawn, if you create a square on that line, interesting things begin to appear, which we will see shortly. You can see the tracing of the inner form here, and that four and a half millimeter distance between the form and the outer edge of the belly are both visible. I have drawn from the compass point at the top, the compass point at the bottom, the center line of the instrument. Those points were made directly on the center line of the inner form. If we use the compass points that we have identified, let's see where the rest of the inner form will take us in our analysis of the belly anatomy. Starting at the top, Let's take as our compass radius the distance to 
the point where the treble F touches this cross line that we have identified as the square of the width of the top. If we just draw that line, we see to our surprise that not only does it touch the Fs, it also defines the end of the upper corners. In modern violin making, we don't think of the corners as being defined in any way beyond the taste of the maker. Therefore, they can be cut shorter, longer, wider, narrower. This is beginning to suggest something a little different in the mind of Stradivari. Let's see if we learn more clues. Now, we've had our compass center here. We have drawn a circle based upon the scribe marks on the form. We have found that it touches the centers of the I's of the F's. But further down there is another puncture point which gives us some opportunity to see if there's more information on that form. If we come up to our same starting point here, let that be the radius, let's see where that line goes. It comes back around, of course touches just above the base F and neatly trims the outside of the lower corners. So they seem not to be a matter of the maker's whim, but of something far more determined and based upon some geometric um, inner structure to the violin. And there's more information from this point that we can glean. If, instead of taking this as our starting point, let's go down to that center point. So we have two puncture points, and that's the radius. This is very interesting. Look what we have here. Following it around, we have the same over here. The inner notches of the Fs appear to be placed in a very specific place and multiply determined. We have the line we've already looked at, and then we have this circle. And the circle also gives us the centers of the lower eyes of the F's, just as we had the centers of the upper eyes. There's one more spot to look at, and that's the bottom puncture point. Let's see where we can go with it. Let's take it from here, from the same center point on the farm, and draw that line. Crosses the bee sting of the purfling, lies just above the outer notch of the base F and smack on the outer notch of the treble F and then crosses the purfling again. So we see that even something as apparently um, freely placed as the notches of the Fs are not all that free. They have an inherent connection to the center line of the form. Now, how's that possible? But let's look here. These notches are lower than those. This one is a millimeter below the cross line. This is below the compass line. Up here, we have already seen that the top of the F is below this cross line by a millimeter. So they have a millimeter droop all the way down through the center of the F. This one, on the other hand, is very, very exact. So exact that we see no freedom at all. We see determination and mathematical precision in the work.